All right, so today we're talking about using channel messaging and the channel messaging API to communicate between two tabs, two windows, or the service worker and your web page. So I'm going to use the service worker example because that's the most common use for this. Now, I've already covered videos on broadcast messaging and using the client's API to send messages between one or more clients. Uh, with channel messaging, the difference here is that you're dealing with two endpoints. So it's just between this web page and the service worker. So there's going to be one channel that has two ports, a port on either end, and the two points, the two parties agree that they're going to use that one channel to talk to each other. Nobody else can access it. It's only these two that can work with this. So it's kind of a two-step process. We use regular messaging to create a message channel, and then we're going to send the port to the service worker. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using a separate function, a separate step. I'm clicking a button and that's going to be my trigger to send it, but we wouldn't have to do that. Normally you can just say, okay, the page is loaded. Let's send, let's create a message channel and send the port over to the service worker. But for this example, I've broken it up into two steps so we can see the two steps happening. All right. So I've got my HTML file, which is loading messages.js. That's this file. I'm listening for the DOM content loaded event. When that happens, I call my init function. I register my service worker, which is the script over here. Uh, the service worker, I've got listeners for the install, activate, and fetch events. They're not doing anything. I've got a, a version name for my service worker. I've got a message listener. So we're going to start off with this where we're using this message event listener to receive the port. So we're going to be sending the port from the script over to the service worker. Service worker is going to hang on to that port and say, okay, this is what I'm going to use from this point forward to receive messages from my client, from the web page. Now I have here also, in addition to my listeners for my buttons, in the script for my web page, I'm listening for the message event. So we could send messages just with the regular message sending event that we did in the last video. So I can use the clients to send a message over here that'll be received. Not a problem, but um, in this example, I'm only really going to be using this the first time. After I've sent the port, then I'm going to be attaching a listener to call this same function, got message. This is going to be called after I've sent the port over to here, I'm going to use my own port to listen. So I'm going to add a listener to the port that's going to call this mess this function right here. All right, so let's do the sending of the port first. When I click on this port button, I call this function and we need to create a message channel. So let's do that. So there's a built-in function new message channel. This creates the channel object, which is going to have two ports, one that my web page keeps and one that I'm going to send. I'm actually going to transfer ownership of the second port over to the service worker. It's a transferable object, this port. It's something that's allowed to be transferred from the ownership of this script to the ownership of the service worker. So we're actually going to send it over. So I'm going to save one port for myself. So I've got this property right up here. I don't have to include this line. I've got it there just to show that, yes, there is a global property within my namespace called port. That's where I'm going to be saving the first port from my message channel. So channel.port1. That's it. It's actually called. The property is actually called port1, and the other property is port2. So I've saved it here. Now, what I can do is I can actually use my port to add my listener. Just like we added the listener here for the message event, we're going to, we could do the same thing here. App.port on message. Now, this is the sort of old event syntax where we're saying 
here's the event listener we're listening for, the message event. Here we're using the add event listener syntax. Here, port can only really ever have one listener. So this is the syntax that it supports. It's an older JavaScript syntax, but we're doing the same thing as, as we do here. Effectively, we're attaching a listener and this is the function right here, app.getMessage, that we want to call. There we go. So we're not using add event listener. We're not adding a whole bunch of listeners. We can't add a whole bunch of listeners. There's just the one listener. So there it is. Now this, if we receive a message on port one, this function down here is going to fire. All right, so now we've got port one saved. We're listening on port one for messages that are coming to us. We need to now transfer port number two over to the service worker. So as we do with the regular messaging that we do with the clients, if I'm going to send a message over to my service worker, I need to be sure that the service worker is actually ready. So navigator service worker ready. This property is actually a promise. When I have a ready, prepared, activated service worker, I call this and then the then method waits for a reference to the service worker's registration to be ready. And when that is ready, it will have a property called active. That is the active service worker. And that is where we're sending our message. So it looks pretty much like any other messaging that we've done up until now in this series. We're calling post message to send a message. The first parameter in here is, okay, what's the object? What's the string? What is the message that we're sending from here over to the service worker? Now, since this is an unusual case, we're not just saying, hi there, you know, I, I'm, you're currently online, you're offline. Uh, the user has clicked on some button. It's not a basic message like that. So we could do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to use something that we wouldn't normally do in any other circumstance. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to write it in all caps. I'm going to create an object that has a property called type and the value is port. Now I don't have to use that property name, that property value. It's just, that's something that I can specifically listen for. In the service worker, when I get a message, we're going to have the EV, the event, message event. It's got a data property. Now that data property is this first thing, whatever the message is, the object that's being sent over. So great, we're getting that, it's coming over. I need to know, is there something in here called type? So we can check for that. So if ev.data.type and ev.data.type, written in all caps, is port. If those two things are true, I know that the message being sent from my script to the service worker is telling me that, oh, we're actually going to add something else here. The second parameter is an array and inside of there, this is where we put channel port two. All right, so we have that. Now, when I click on this button, I'm actually sending port two over into my service worker. My service worker receives this and checks to see, okay, is there something called type and is its value port? If it is, I know that I'm getting the port. With the port, we're gonna handle it kind of like we did right here. We're going to say, all right, I, I can declare a variable or I can put a property on self. Doesn't really matter which way you do this. We're just going to have it here temporarily. So let's say let port or self port. We're going to take that and the port is going to be coming from the event object. So we had ev.data, but that's not what we need to use here. We need to use ev.ports. And this is the name of the property right here. This array is ev.ports. That's what the property is called. And it is an array. So in the square brackets, we want to get, hey, 
the first thing in that array. We only sent one thing, so the first thing in that array is going to be this port. And then we add the message listener. So self.port.onMessage, just like we did over here. And that is going to be our function got message. And there we have it. So now when we click the button, we're creating a message channel. We're getting a port, saving one for ourselves, and listening on that port for messages that are going to be coming back from here. And we're going to, when the service worker is ready, send port number two. So this message channel had port one, port two. We're sending number two over to here. The ports array number zero is port two. And so we're going to add a listener, the on message listener for that, to call got message. It will receive EV. That's the message event. And just like every message that we're sending back and forth, EV, sorry, not message, EV.data, that is the message that we're getting. So in here, we're passing that over. And we should add a console log in here just to see that we are getting this stuff. So console.log, let's, uh, let's do EV ports zero. So we'll see our, our ports object being passed in. Okay, so we'll jump back into the browser, share the port, and there we go. Service worker on line 11, there's the message port. So there was a message port that was received inside the service worker it now can receive messages. So if I'm going to send a message, I'm going to send it to be received over here. To send the message. Unlike what we did here with getting the registration of the service worker, getting the active one and using that to post the message, we want to send it to the port. So that is why we have this app.port. So app.port.postMessage, that is going to be how we send a message. So uh, let's just create a property in here called message. Hello from port one is what we'll send. All right. So now if we click our button to send message, it should send via port one this object right here, message, hello from port one. That'll be received over here in the got message and we should write it out, line 19 from the service worker. So send the port, there it is. Send the message and there it is. Message, hello from port one. So we are now using this message channel with the two ports we've created. It's like having a phone call with two cell phones and we're calling from one phone to the other. Now we just have to sort of reverse the flow and send the message back on a port, which actually this is, instead of using let port, this is why we want to have self port because that is how we're going to send the message back. So post message, I don't have to worry about the clients. I don't have to loop through all the clients, get all the clients, claim the clients. I just have to say, hey, the port, the one that you gave me, I'm gonna use that to send my message back. So post message. Now we can test inside of here. We could say if port in self, you know, it's always good to test these things um, else. We could use the client's API to send something. But here we go. We're going to send something back from our port, from our end of the channel. And we'll have a message coming back here. And the message will be hello from port two. Okay, so we have this now. When we want to send a message, there we go. So when we receive something, we'll send a message back using that port got message. This is going to be receiving our message. And it's because of this right here. Um, this we could actually remove if we wanted just to be sure that what we're getting is through the port. So 
So instead of add event listener, we are going to remove event listener. So we're going to get rid of the event listener that we created up here. We only use this. Actually, we didn't use this at all. We were just sending a message. We were there listening in case we got something back. We're getting rid of that right here. And we're going to be listening on our port and only on our port. We don't have to get rid of this, but just to illustrate the fact that we are using the port. So we'll say console.log ev.data. We should get our message back. So we send the ports over, we get that. We send a message using our port, which is port one. This message comes over, it is received. We display it from line 19, and then we send a message which will send hello from port two back over to here. All right, so let's save all this. We'll come back, send the port, line 11, that worked. Send a message, line 19, and then it sent the message back from the service worker received in our message page. And there it is. That's the whole thing. That is sending and receiving, using channel messaging, using the two ports. So if you have a situation where you want to be sure that it's messaging only happening between one client and, and one server or between two specific clients, this is a way that you can do that fairly easily without having to worry about the client's API or looping through and looking at cl client IDs. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.